Hello and welcome to Messaging Makes It Happen. I'm Jacqueline Hanna, the Assistant Director of Food Co-op Initiative. Thanks for joining me. Let's talk about what you're gonna learn in this session. What I'm gonna cover today are the core concepts of effective messaging as a startup food co-op. And actually these three core concepts are useful in all kinds of messaging for almost any type of business or organization, but we're gonna focus on startup food co-ops. And those three core concepts that we'll be covering is knowing your audience or audiences, which is pinpointing who those audiences are. Your startup food co-op does not have only one audience and it's important to know who those audiences are to effectively message. Then we're gonna look at rooting your messages in core values. We're gonna talk about what it means to root all of your messaging for your startup food co-op through the core values of your startup food co-op or a, what I call a values lens and how that makes you more effective. We're then gonna look at the last concept, number three, vehicles. This is also sometimes called channels. And these are the tools we use to get those messages out. What are those tools? And examples of how you layer those vehicles for more effective messaging and reaching of more audiences. These three concepts will actually be the foundation, the base of a session we're holding this afternoon called the Messaging Planning Workshop. That one's gonna be live with me. We're gonna use these concepts but we're gonna use them with a spreadsheet. You will have a link to get your own copy and we'll actually be working through this messaging planning worksheet that takes these core concepts and turns them into something that you can use to plan out who you're messaging to, what messages and how to make your messaging more effective, which will act like a magic wand to help you increase your effectiveness at growing your food co-op in multiple ways. All right. Before we get started, I just want to be clear that this session is rooted in the understanding that you already believe and know that messaging is powerful and so important to the growth of your startup food co-op. I will not be making the argument here to convince you about how important messaging is and why messaging is so important. I'm going to assume if you came to the session, you already know. And so we'll instead be focusing all of our time on these core concepts of how to effectively message. And with that, let's get started. Let's flip open my magic book of messaging for startup food co-ops and see what we need to weave this messaging spell. Ingredient number one is the right audiences and knowing who they are and how they like to be messaged to. Ingredient number two in our spell is the values lens of your startup food co-op. And the last piece of our magical messaging spell will be vehicles, the ways you will deliver these messages and how to layer them or stack them for success. With these three ingredients to our messaging spell, we can weave some incredible magic to help grow your food co-op. Let us start with audiences or who the heck are you talking to anyway? I ask this because a lot of times startup food co-ops don't necessarily know, and that makes sense, some sense at first, but sometimes it's just because we haven't taken a little bit of time to identify who we're speaking to. Most startups will actually tell me, oh, well, we're talking to absolutely anyone who is an owner of the co-op or could be. We're talking to anyone in this community at all, because anyone's a potential owner of our food co-op and we're going to serve the whole community. This is accurate on a lot of levels, right? I mean, the co-op, anyone could join in your community and you hope that everyone and anyone will. But it's actually not an effective way to message because there are a lot of people in your community who are gonna be more likely or less likely to be involved with the co-op. And we want to invest our messaging energy and time and efforts. And it takes actually a lot of time and effort. Any of you who have led messaging for your startup know it takes a lot more time and effort to do well than most people think. And we want to invest that in the audiences that are likely to resonate with the co-op and get involved with the co-op before open. So to do that, we need to identify our audiences a little more carefully. There's two ways to really look at and understand and identify your startup food co-op's audiences right now. One is looking at the types 
of audiences. We'll talk about what that means. This also, we could think of the types of audiences is the different types of stakeholders in your startup food club. Then we have layering of audiences. This has a lot more to do with where you are in the development of your food co-op. If you're communicating in a stage one, early stage two A way, and there's different messages there, that audience is different. Or if you're well into late stage two A or in stage two B or beyond, the way you message is different because the audience is different. So we'll talk about types of audiences and layers of audience. Let us better understand our magical ingredient of audiences and we'll start with types of audiences. Now, I was joking earlier that a lot of startups say, we only have two audiences, current owners and people who could become owners. And I was teasing y'all, but to a degree, that's very accurate. Your most important audience types of audiences are existing owners and potential owners. But remember that types of audiences also equates to stakeholders in the co-op. And there are many other stakeholders in the co-op who are paying attention to your messaging, to whom your messaging is important. And we need to be aware of them and what they think of the messaging you're doing as well. So you want to know about these audiences. You may primarily speak directly to in 95% of your messaging to existing owners and or potential owners, but these other stakeholder groups are additional types of audiences that you need to be aware of. We do have our two most important types of audiences, but even within those types of audiences, there are subtypes. So some of those other stakeholders or audiences are groups like community partners how you message and what you message is important to them. Do you have existing community partners that you're working with or have recently worked with as the, the food co-op? Or are you looking for community partners that you might partner with in the future to broaden your audience, to get more done together? Community partners are important to start up food co-ops as well as to open food co-ops. And relationships you're setting up with those community partners hopefully will be lasting for many, many years into the future after your doors are open. So how you message is important to them, how professional it is, how understandable and clear, how you reference them, how often you talk about them or how much credit you give them for how they partner with you. Messaging is going to be important and this is one of your types of audiences. Another type of audience is local officials. If you're a startup food co-op that is not going to need the approval of your city for a variance, for a building permit, for uh, is not looking to your city for any assistance with grants, TIF funds, uh, not looking for any assistance from your city, just in amplifying your project, working with your developer, please raise your hand. I should see no hands up right now, by the way. No startup food club can raise their hands on that. A good relationship with local officials is going to be critical from the uh, from the mayor themselves to the to the uh, offices inside of the city that you're going to have to work with for permitting to your in your little neighborhood representatives. Anyone who is a local official has a lot of potential impact on your project, and they're absolutely a stakeholder in the future of the food co-op and how you message is critical to them. Again, they'll want to see professionalism, effectiveness, they'll want to see momentum, and they'll want to make sure that the way you're talking about them when you do reference working with them is positive. So they're an important audience in your messaging as well. Next type of audience future vendors. If your startup food co-op is going to be focusing on local, especially local food, local products, but also if you're real focused as one of our example food co-ops will be a little later in this session on promoting local businesses, both through selling their products through your store and just in like how you interact in the community, how the co-op talks, how it shares its audience, your those other local vendors and businesses are a critical audience you're going to be working with them in the future and they're an important part of your values another important audience developer and developers and landlords don't have a site yet don't have a developer or a landlord already online so it doesn't matter so much right wrong potential developers and potential landlords are as much an audience as any they're important 
before you have those agreements because they're looking at your project, seeing its professionalism, seeing its momentum, and it's going to have an effect on whether they want to work with you, what kind of deals they might cut you. It can affect many things. If you have a developer or landlord relationship and you've already signed on the dotted line, it may not change anything about the negotiations of the core agreement, but it still can change everything about the health of your relationship with them, how much they have faith in the project, how much they're willing to bend this or that when something comes up in the middle of the build out because they know how important you are to the community or how much momentum you have or how many owners would be you know, not so happy with them if they didn't do a good job in supporting the co-op. And they're gonna be looking at how you talk about them. And that's gonna affect your future relationship with them as well. So they're a type of audience or stakeholder in the co-op. Last one that I'm listing, granting bodies and lenders. Again, even if you're an early stage one and you're not applying for any grants yet, and you're certainly not talking to lenders yet about funding your future co-op. But everything about your messaging is important now. The way you develop, the way you build, the momentum you build, the way you talk about the co-op are all things that potential granting bodies and lenders will be looking at when you in the future reach out to them to work together or ask for a grant. And so it's important from stage one on and certainly once you're further along and are applying for those grants are starting to build relationships with potential primary lenders. They are definitely a stakeholder that you want to keep an eye on and think about how your messaging affects. They are one of your types of audiences. Now, to be clear, as I said before, your existing owners and your potential owners are who you're going to be messaging towards 95% of the time. But you're going to want to be aware of these additional types of audiences and be considering your messaging through the lens of how it would look to them. Now, because 95% of your messaging will be targeting these two types of audiences, existing owners and potential owners, let's talk about them in just a little more depth. So we have your core owners and volunteers. Now these are your super engaged owners. These are the people who do come out and volunteer. They like you on social media, they come out to events, they read the newsletter, one or all of those things. And this group of owners is never the majority of the owners of your food co-op, I'm sorry to tell you. If you're in early, if you're in stage one, I'm sorry to tell you this, those who are in later stage 2A, 2B, they can tell you it is true. These are really important owners and how we talk to them and message to them is important. But because they're so, they provide so much of the energy of the co-op, but they're not the majority of your owners. So this existing owner type audience, those core owners are one type of existing owner. And then there's what I call the quiet majority. The quiet majority of your owners believe in the food co-op. That's why they laid their money down. They love what you're about. But for whatever reason, and there can be many, they're not going to probably volunteer or they'll volunteer maybe once. They're not going to come to all your events. Maybe they'll come to one or two. They're not always gonna stop by your booth at the farmer's market. They may not actually engage with your social media too often unless you put up a post that's wildly popular and exciting and they happen to run across it and then maybe they'll like it. They're still very important, but they need to be messaged to differently. When you're asking for volunteers and talking about how important volunteers are and how you need every owner to get in and get involved, those quiet majority owners can actually feel overwhelmed and alienated because they're not gonna volunteer to that level. They can't get involved to that level. If you don't also message, it's so important that our owners just stay aware of what's going on at the co-op and invite a friend to come or tell them about, or maybe come out to our big event once in a while. And if that's supporting the co-op too and creating a difference, you're gonna make them feel like the only kind of owners you need are those core owners and they don't have value. That messaging, not being aware of saying, oh, well, we message to existing owners, we message to core owners, and missing the quiet majority, you can actually do damage to your momentum, not being aware that the existing owner type of audience actually has two sub audiences and think through how your messaging is going to hit each of those audiences. Your other big area, your other most important type of audience are potential owners and who are they? They're everyone who's not an owner, right? Still in your community, wrong. This is where we don't wanna waste energy saying it's everyone because it's not. People who are not your core owners and who aren't gonna be what we're gonna call your early adopters, we'll talk about those a little bit later in the session, the people, we, we still, there's gonna be this next layer of people 
who are going to be very attracted to one or more of the co-op's values and likely to act on it if messaged to correctly. But they're not just anyone and they're not your core. So who are they? we're gonna to wanna to have some idea, even like some profiles of the type of person they might be, the kinds of things they might engage in, so we know how to message them. But identifying those types, those people, those potential next audiences of potential owners is gonna also take knowing where you are in your development as a startup or what layer of audience you are ready to address. And we'll talk about that more in just a minute. Before we do that real quick, just keep in mind that any messaging you do to your existing owners should also at least make sense to your potential owners and vice versa. No messaging to either the existing owners or potential owners should be confusing, alienating, or utterly boring to the other audience, the other type of audience. And, and what I mean by that is, is, let's say you were messaging to existing owners saying, hey, our annual report's coming out, year three of organizing the food club, all about what we've accomplished this year, 500, 500 owners at this point. Will that make sense to potential owners? You could say it like, annual report coming out, third year of organizing, we've hit 500 owners. That won't mean anything to them. They'll go three years of organizing, they're still not open, oh my goodness. 500 owners, is that good? Is that bad? Does that mean we're opening tomorrow? We don't know. It's, it's a bunch of, it's a bunch of like in circle gobbledygook. I don't know what that means. Yes, you're messaging to the existing owners who will know more of what that means, but also don't assume they remember <laughs> what that means, that they aren't also frustrated about three years and don't need to understand that actually you're at a great point for three years into your development. They don't need a little bit of a message about why 500 owners is such an accomplishment and why it's a good sign. They might, they probably do need that messaging, but the potential owners definitely do. And when you message that, mean that whatever that is, that message to the existing owners in a way that potential owners can also understand it by throwing in, we're, three, we're at year three of our organizing and have accomplished so much. The average startup food co-op opens at year five to six and we're on target. Five, we hit the 500 owner goal three months before the end of the year, which was when we were planning to do that come and read our annual report to learn about that and more about why your co-op is moving forward you know and is successful that message will make sense to your potential owners will not confuse or alienate or bore them and it will help your existing owners as well if the message makes sense to the potential owners it'll make sense to the existing now reverse real quick how that could look a message to potential owners we quite often need to focus on how we talk about our values a little differently for them so there's this way we talk to the core owners early on and and you know we're going to do this and this and, that. and for the potential owners we might just focus on one value that we know has like the most resonance even with people who don't think exactly like us and there's ways to do that that make it still feel like it's all about who the co-op fully is and there's ways to isolate that value and make it seem like well, we're just about having organic food like well those potential owners are like Woo, organic food that's something i'm interested in organic food local food cool cool but you can say it in a way that makes the existing owners feel like you've divorced it from everything else the co-op is and their values so you want to make sure that message is not alienating to them okay just a quick example let's talk about the layers of ownership the layers so we have the types of audiences sorry it's layers of audience they're really two layers there's the before the ring of fire art layer and there's the after ring of fire these green circles that you see are stage one and early stage two way. And this is when you are basically messaging to people who mostly think just like you. There will be hundreds of them before you really have to shift the message. People who really get all of the coast values are into them, attracted to them. They just need to hear about them enough and the right way, and they're going to be on board. That's your core or what we call early adapters. But that ring changes as you move into late stage 2A or maybe all the way till 2B it might take to change, but you will notice that you're not attracting new owners at the same rate. And that is because you have attracted most of your core, core audience or your early adopters, people who have so much resonance with exactly the way you think as an organizer. And now we are at the ring of people who don't think exactly like you or don't think about the, those values 
values in the exact same way, who might be deeply attracted to one of the values, but not all the values or a couple of them, and need the message differently to resonate with them while they still resonate with the co-op and will get involved. They need the message delivered in, a way, delivered in a way that reaches them and that is meaningful to them, that speaks their language. So knowing which layer of audience, if you're, you're aiming at an early adopter layer, or if you're aiming at a late adapter layer, it's gonna have a lot to do with how you message. And so we're gonna have two example food co-ops today. They are both made up. Uh, one of them is Bricktown Co-op Grocery. And Bricktown Co-op Grocery is in a large city. Bricktown is the name of a large neighborhood within that city that is predominantly black and historically black and does not uh, have a grocery store, a decent grocery store inside of it. It has historically been economically redlined and there is a lot of lack of access to good quality food, but there's also a need for economic re-empowerment of the people who live there instead of displacement. So Bricktown Co-op Groceries core values are access to quality fresh food, living wage jobs, incubating and supporting locally owned business, and food and health education for the Bricktown neighborhood. Their stage one audiences might look like this. Some of their core stage one audiences, people who think similar to them, who are going to jump on early. Local churches that are active in food access issues. They're already working on food access issues, access issues. So they're already, already tuned in to this particular issue. And churches are a great place to reach large numbers of the community. But picking the churches that are already working on food access specifically as one of their focuses is going to make them very resonant, very good early adopters to this particular startup food co-op. Then maybe neighbors that organized to fight the sewage plant. Five years ago in Bricktown, they tried to put a brand new sewage plant right on the edge of Bricktown, kind of in the neighborhood actually, and was not gonna be good for the neighborhood's health. And so the community organized and fought it and were effective. Those people already have shown a high level of dedication to doing something to improve their community. So the co-op should resonate. And they're aware from their success and experience that organizing actually works. So they're more likely to have faith in the concept of the co-ops. So they're great potential early adopters. Another part of this audience in stage one might look like for them, the participants in the urban, urban gardening project. There's a major urban gardening project that's been going on for a couple years now that kids are involved with. There's some job creation aspect to it and approaching anyone who's involved with that project or has kids involved with that project, who has family members involved with that project, they're gonna get the importance of rooting food sovereignty into the community and see, be able to see that the food co-op is just another piece of that and want to get involved. So these are very obvious early adopter potential audiences for Bricktown in stage one. In stage two, that might look oh, to be, or to a late to a, sorry, and to be, that might look a little different. They got all their early adopters. Who else mostly agrees with them or agrees with certain parts of their values and could be messaged to in a way that would make them totally get the alignment? It's just gonna take a little different kind of approach and get involved. So some potential audiences for that next layer, that late adopter layer for Bricktown might be other local churches with health programs. There are a lot of churches in their community and some of them are involved in food access, but some of them aren't, but they do, most of them have really active health programs, trying to address health disparities in their community and lack of proper care, teach about nutrition, exercise and so forth. So reaching out to any of those churches that already care and are doing some work around health disparities, there's a great audience to talk about how the co-op helps address that and bring them on board with some slightly different messaging. Neighbors that will be within half a mile radius of the store. So Bricktown has identified its site. Now it knows who's going to be an easy walking distance of this store. And if they can get those neighbors aware of the co-op, what it's gonna be, what it's gonna do, they have a very good reason to get invested now. This is going to be really important to their lives or could be because it's so close. So that's a great next outer layer of audience that they could approach. Another potential one, parents of kids in the after school program at the community center. There's a really large popular community center that does after school programming. And in the last couple of years, they have added in healthy cooking, healthy eating classes, and involving the parents as much as possible 
those families and so many of them are interacting with this community center already have some knowledge about needing more healthy food and food access in the, in the community. Their kids are like attuned to it more, are asking about vegetables. This is a great potential audience also for the co-op now that it's beyond its early adopters. You're gonna have to talk to them a little differently, message them a little differently, but they are a great potential late adopter audience. I also have an example here for Center City Food Co-op, just to give you an idea. Center City is a college town and they're going to be focused much more on local producers and farmers um, and on education on sustainable, uh, environmentally sustainable living as well as food. And this community has a little more economic wealth uh, and it isn't really so specific to what part of the community they put the store in because the community as a whole just would like more access to local food. So I have some examples here of what their stage one direct audiences might look like. You can read those over real quick. And then how they might evolve. So that's their, that's their early adopter audience. Some ways that some people, some, some types of people that might be those early adopters and then what their late adopter groups might look like who have a high degree of resonance with some aspect of the food co-op but weren't as likely to get involved in the early adopter phase. It's important to know who these audiences are so you know how to tone your messages. All right, we've talked about audiences and how to identify them, how there's both layers and types of audiences. Now let's talk about values. We've said, who are you talking to? That was audience. Now, why should they bleep and care? That's what values is. Everyone in your community is currently buying groceries and sourcing groceries. They don't not have a source. They might not have a source as close as they'd like. They might not have a source of the type of food they'd like. They might not have a source that's as quality as they would like, but they are already accessing groceries. And so while it's a motivation point, uh, to hear the co-op's going to bring a grocery store to here that's more accessible to me that is going to provide the kind of food I want and that is definitely a reason to join. The reason most people will join your food co-op will be because of the values because you're giving them a chance to invest in values they deeply believe in and seeing them unfold in their community and being able to do it with their community and not having to try and do it all by themselves, actually giving them an easy way to execute on their values by becoming an owner. Now, your values are gonna come straight out of the mission or the vision cornerstone. This comes from, as you see here, the four cornerstones and three stages development model from Food Co-op Initiative. And it is one of the cornerstones, vision. If you have not done as a startup food co-op your vision work and identified your mission core values and vision, we have an entire video series on that called Components of Vision. Please check that out on the Food Co-op Initiative website. But we're gonna move forward and say, Bricktown's done this work. They have a mission, they have core values, they have vision and, and a vision. They're clean, they're concise, they're shortly worded, they're easy to remember. But to create our values lens for messaging, we're gonna make it even shorter. You're just gonna go through that mission, core values and vision, and you're gonna highlight the very key words about values. Access to quality, fresh food, living wage jobs and incubation support of business, small businesses, food and health education. And in this case, in Bricktown's vision, that they wanna do all of those values things for the Bricktown neighborhood very specifically. They would not care so much about creating access to quality fresh food if it wasn't going to be in the Bricktown neighborhood. They would not care so much about bringing living wage jobs to anywhere in the city. They wanna bring them to Bricktown. So that's an extra important part of their values lens. For Center City, it looks different. They have a different type of community, different focus. And so those core value pieces are going to be a little different, but they're still gonna pour, pull them from their mission, core values and vision. In this case, local producers and farmers, vibrant, inclusive community, education on food is sustainable living. You don't see me focusing on exactly where this co-op is going to serve because it's not quite as important to them. If it lands, the store is anywhere in their community, it's going to be accessible to them and meet these values, they're happy. Okay, so now we have the simplified values lens, one for Bricktown and one for Center City. They're specific to their co-ops. This is something you're going to want to create for your co-op. 
let's just talk for a minute about the magic of the values lens when that spell is that piece of the spell is put into place. The picture you see over here is actually a picture of the future uh, North Flint community market. And my <laughs> forgive, forgive me, uh, North Flint, and thank you for letting me borrow your picture unknowingly. This is a picture of their future store. I just needed an image uh, of a rendering of a future store. We're gonna pretend this is Bricktown. And there was an article put out on them. And it says, after six years, Bricktown Co-op Grocery will break ground this summer. They could just put up this, and I've often seen startup food co-ops put up news articles about them with a nice image and just say something like, your co-op is in the news. We can't wait to see you at the groundbreaking. Or Bricktown could put the message through their values lens and not miss this amazing opportunity to talk about this huge milestone of breaking ground. They could say, we are proud to announce that our shared dream of access to quality fresh foods, creating living wage jobs and improving health for our community is about to become a reality, Bricktown. It's not too late to become a part of building together with our community for our community. Join the co-op today and build a brighter future for Bricktown. Which of those two messages gave you a little chill up your spine, made you proud of your community? If you were an owner, made you proud to be an owner. And if you weren't, made you curious about becoming one. It'll be the one where they shared the values, where they poured the message through a values lens. Now that's a dramatic, that's a dramatic version though, right? You're like, well, yeah, announcing a groundbreaking definitely mentioned your values, but what about more everyday messaging and putting it through the magical values lens? Does it really make that much of a difference to do that with more minor, maybe even filler messaging that you're doing, let's say on your social media? Here's an example. We can pretend, we'll pretend it's a center city. Center city, it's Mother's Day. Mother's Day is kind of goodness knows if you run the social media for your startup, we need content, Mother's Day will do. Let's throw up an image about Mother's Day and a quick message. And so center city just said, happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there from center city food co-op. Nice enough, works, it's not, not bad. What if they poured it through a values lens? What if they said something like, what mom really wants for Mother's Day is a beautiful locally owned grocery store where she can shop for healthy local food and know she's doing good for her and her community. And now she can have that by becoming an owner of Center City Food Co-op. We have gift ownerships available at the link. Some of you were watching this video thinking, really Jacqueline, we're gonna use Mother's Day to push ownership? One, heck yeah, yeah you are, <laughs> do. I encourage you to, yes. Because if you believe in what you're selling, if you believe the co-op is going to do wonderful things for your community, yes, every time we communicate, almost every time, we're going to mention the opportunity to get involved. But okay, let's say you want to put it through the values lens, this Mother's Day concept, but you don't want to, on the post, push ownership as part of Mother's Day. All right, fine. Then let's take a lovely little example here from actually Cultivate Community Food Co-op, a startup food co-op in Benicia, California. This is actually the image and these words are the real posts they put up for Mother's Day. And they shared, what does Mother's Day and food co-ops have in common? As a community owned democratically run entity, we all have a say on what our co-op will be like. Maybe we are more like the Mother's Day work clubs of the past than we know, working to give our community a healthy place to shop, meet and learn. Read the full article, Mother's Day and the Cooperative Connection in our May newsletter. Hey, they hyped the values of the co-op. They tied it to this post. They took an opportunity to talk about the co-op and its magical values and let people resonate with those. And if they resonated with them at all or got curious, here's a link to learn more from another layer of messaging, social media and newsletter. Nicely done. They put it through the lens of their values and they made a much more compelling social media post. But the point is, is when you pour all your messaging, your newsletter, all your social media posts, everything you do to message the co-op through the values lens and mention some angle of the co-op's values front and center in everything you communicate, you get much more effective. You amplify, the spell is cast and your messaging becomes 10 times more effective.
I made that number up, but <laughs> it becomes a lot more effective. It builds connection to the co-op, it builds interest in the co-op, and it builds momentum. I can't stress it enough. So we've talked about who are you talking to, audiences, why should they care, messaging through values. Now let's talk about how are you going to get those well-crafted values-based messages to those audiences you've identified carefully and thoughtfully. You're going to do it through what I call vehicles because they're the method of delivery of the message to the audience. Some people call them channels. You might hear it called that too. You have lots of vehicles as a startup food co-op. You have your board volunteer talking points, which I hope you regularly have. Uh, everyone knows what the message you're on right now for the co-op. You have your social media, whichever and all of the platforms that you use on social media. I still recommend you only focus on two heavily. Um, newsletter and email is a vehicle for getting those messages to your audiences. Your website, press releases, and earned media. Earned media means media coverage you didn't pay for. Events. Your events actually are effective vehicles for your core values to your audiences, but depending on what kind of events you choose to throw that appeal to which audiences and amplify which values. Paid social media ads, they're another way, another vehicle for getting your message maybe to new audiences you've never spoken to before with your values front and center. And even swag, your t-shirts, your, your bag, your reusable bags, your lawn signs are opportunities to talk about the co-op's values, to amplify them and target specific audiences. Now, before we move on to a little more about how to use the vehicles to move those messages, real quick, I call it, which one is the car? Well, exercise. <laughs> which of these vehicles is the one that is going to get the most use? It is going to target the most people, get the most interaction. And I'm gonna tell you nine times out of 10, for any startup food co-op, that is going to be social media. So we, I call it the car because no matter what other kinds of transportation are out there, in all but the very largest of cities, the car is the most used form of transportation to get from point A to point B, no matter what, how we feel about it. It's the most commonly used vehicle. So no matter how you feel about social media, it's the most commonly used, most important vehicle for moving messages. So if you're gonna Slack, like your website doesn't kept up to date, you're low capacity on that right now, don't slack on the social media. It's your most important vehicle. All right. But the thing about vehicles for messages to audiences is that using any single one isn't that effective, actually. The important thing about vehicles is to stack them or layer them. So let's just look through some examples real quick of what that could look like. If it's something you're trying to get across that's more ordinary or, you know, important, but like, you know, not big news, like a monthly community meeting or an ownership growth, an owner growth mini campaign. Owner growth mini campaigns are mostly social media campaigns. That's where the audience for it's going to be. So that's where you're going to announce it. And you're going to back it up with, you know, some newsletters, maybe an email even about how far you are in your goal the last couple of days and, you know, what you can do to bring in a couple more owners to help us meet our goal. If it's your monthly community meeting, uh, a lot of co-ops, especially start, startup, uh, Black-led startup food co-ops, have monthly community meetings where anyone can come and get an update on what's going to co-op and learn about how to get involved, share their opinions. They happen every month. They're important, but they're not the biggest news. So again, social media, newsletters, and or email will be an effective number of layers, just two layers of messaging to get across that this is happening and you can participate. But if the message is more important, let's say you hit a big ownership milestone. You have this goal to get to 700 owners by the end of the year, and you hit it on December 10th. Wow. That's a big, important message. That's gonna attract a lot of attention, build momentum, make you see your co-op seem very successful. It's gonna bring more owners if you message it right. So we wanna get that out there. How are we gonna layer that message to reach all of our audiences and show them what we're doing? We're gonna use more vehicles. We're gonna use social media. We're gonna use our newsletter, maybe some emails. We're gonna use a press release. 
this is a big milestone hit. You're going to want to write a press release not only about that you hit the milestone, but giving them some quotes and some perspective to make it seem sexy and exciting so they'll write it up because we want to get some earned media out of this. It's an important thing. And we're going to want to get it on the front page of our website. If our website is way out of date and says, you know, we're working on 500 owners right now, oh my God, you just hit this phenomenal milestone. We need to get that off there and put that new, new uh, message on that website, that vehicle, to get it out there to more audiences. If the message is even more important and has even broader appeal to all of the audiences you're trying to target, like announcing your groundbreaking date, whoo, that is a sexy message. That's going to need to go out with as many vehicles as humanly possible. It's important to your momentum and to your growth as a co-op and to getting to those important audiences. So that message is going to go out through more vehicles. Newsletter and email, yes. Social media, yes. Press releases, yes. Website, yes. Maybe even new swag. We're going to groundbreak. Show up at the groundbreaking and get your opportunity to get the first brand new co-op t-shirts oh, advertising our future store with our new logo look. A lot of startup food co-ops refangle, retool their logo a little bit for right around this time for when they open as a grocery store. So it's effective for that. It's a little shinier, a little posher. If you're doing something like that, put out new swag for it. That's a new way. It's all another way to message that our co-op is going places. We're groundbreaking. We're going to open. Even if you're not changing the logo, it's still an opportunity to put out new swag that makes people excited about the groundbreaking that you're going to release at the groundbreaking. It's another vehicle. And then paid social media ads. This might be the right time. Announcing a groundbreaking date is exciting. Being able to tell people in different audiences throughout your community who aren't involved with the co-op yet, which you can do, you can target through social media, that you have a groundbreaking date, that this is moving forward and they can come see it happen, that's going to get you some audience bandwidth. So we're going to use more layers of vehicles because this is a big message. Just real quick, some example, an example from Bricktown. Our friends at Bricktown are going to be offering a new local business showcase event on the site of their future store. So aligned with their values. Awesome. Um, so they want to get this out here. They've got a great values lens just on the event itself. The event is a vehicle. Values lens, supporting small local businesses in Bricktown, pops up. Okay. And they're trying to get this out to as many of their audiences as possible, existing owners, as well as potential owners, as well as those other stakeholders. A lot of those stakeholders would want to know about this. So they're going to put it in their newsletter for sure, but with a series of three short spotlights about three of the businesses that will be participating at the event, just real short, uh, with links to the, the link to where you can sign up for the event. But they're then going to take these spotlights about these businesses, values messaging, and they're going to share them one at a time on their social media and have a link to the Facebook version of the event where you can click and sign up to say you're interested or going with these different profiles. Maybe they'll do even additional profiles because you only fit three in the newsletter. Maybe they'll do like four more for vendors that are locally owned in Bricktown that are going to be part of this event. And every time they're going to link that event page on Facebook. But then they're also going to do a press release because this is exciting. It's so values focused. It's on their future site, a chance to show off that they have a site. This is good stuff. Okay. So press is going to like this. We're going to put out a press release and we get invited. The Bricktown gets invited to stop by a radio show and talk about this event coming up this weekend. And they bring with them one of their businesses they spotlighted in the newsletter because this is an opportunity to show their values in action again and actually not just talk about their values but demonstrate them by having one of those vendor businesses that is starting a business in Bricktown talk about what the event's going to mean to them and what they'll be offering there slam dunk okay but then they're going to layer one more vehicle in there and they're going to heavily use email the newsletter about the event went out a month before the event. Three weeks before the event, they're going to email out an invitation to their whole email list to the event. Then two weeks out, they're going to email out an invite to that email list to their owners, but saying, here's a great invite to the event you can share with families and friends. Just cut and paste this. And you've pre-written it for them and it's pretty. And you say, share this with three to five friends. Two weeks out. Mm, nice job, more audience. And then one week out, they're going to send out an event reminder. And the day before the event, they'll send out one 
more reminder. They have layered four types of vehicles, used them effectively, applied that values lens, and are getting audience. Before I wrap up for the day, and that is pretty much it. Again, we have talked about who are you talking to? Audience, so important in messaging. Why should they care? Values lens, also so important in messaging. And the last piece, vehicles. How the heck are you gonna get those messages, those value messages to those audiences? We'll be building all of that on that in my next session. But if you're not coming to my next session, I still have, and it's doodled, I have a homework list for you. I will actually put a link in the in the chat during this event while you're watching the video. So right now you should be able to see that over there. And to this list, it's a short list of things that even if you're not coming to do the spreadsheet workshop on how to message plan, some things like you need to identify your types of audiences, identify what layer of audience you're at. Are you still talking to the early adopters or is it time to pivot to your late adopters? Identifying um, who your audiences were in the past will help you identify your ones in the future. And then create your simplified values lens from your mission, core values, and vision, and list all of your potential vehicles. Even if you just do that as a startup food co-op team and don't come learn how to use my spreadsheet to do some of that work, you will get a lot further. And even if you only do part of it, your messaging will become more effective and more magical. One last thing I want to tell you, we're very excited to say that Food Co-op Initiative is, as of up and coming right now, launching a store opening marketing messaging guide. And this was created for us by the fine folks over at the Firebrand Cooperative. This is aimed at startup food co-ops that are about to open their stores. But it's a terrific guide to identifying audiences, which vehicles to use, how to use them, and how to create those core values messaging for an opening store, for stores trying to announce they're about to become a business and wants you to participate in it and shop with them. But I still recommend it to you, even if you're nowhere near that stage, because it talks again about those layers of the messaging. It's not very long and you'll learn a lot about how to do it effectively. Thank you for coming out and watching this video with me today. I hope some of you will be joining me in the afternoon for the messaging planning workshop. You will, this will be a live event. You will get a link, you will click it and get your own copy of the messaging planning spreadsheet. And we're gonna work through it together live. So you have something to take home that solidifies what you've learned in this session. Thanks so much for your time. I hope to see you there.